tighten up and not hurt Glenn when he comes around the corner. You know, that'll be a good thing. <laughs> That was just the gym. <laughs> oh, okay. I told him I'd change on tighten up in a minute and he's going to hurt Glenn. When he... Betty, you don't have your reading glasses and you don't, don't have, have your hearing aids. I don't have your hearing aids. I'm just falling apart. You got your teeth in. <laughs> you, got, you got your teeth in. Oh, they're my teeth. I, don't, I don't. <laughs> Can't lose them. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Hey Lois, oh, I'm saying Lois. Hey Lois on Facebook. There, I see. I saw her name. So, uh, everybody say hey to Lois. Say hey Lois. Hey Lois. <laughs> It's good to see everybody uh, here tonight. We'll go ahead and get started. It's uh, about four minutes till from my watch, but Bobby's got it right at seven o'clock, so uh, I guess Bobby's the official time. So we're going to go ahead and begin tonight. I'm going to mention a couple announcements, and then we're going to go into the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get into our Bible study. So a uh, couple things real quick. So don't forget the National Day of Prayer tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Also tomorrow afternoon, please keep all the families in your prayer uh, of the officers that were slain and um, their families and all the different officers that uh, have been working. And we certainly need to continue to pray for the surrounding areas because they still have um, all the other counties working the law enforcement in Watauga County. So. These guys have been pulling double shifts and working some long, long hours. And uh, so we need, need to be lifting up that tomorrow afternoon. There's going to be a lot of people over there. And uh, just pray for, for that whole situation. But uh, tomorrow, 11 o'clock, National Day of Prayer at the Courthouse, if you're able to go. Uh, also, this coming Saturday at 6 p.m., certainly want uh, to invite everybody to come out. We're going to have you having our hot dog uh, fellowship and a campfire and so all that's going to be going on right up there so we're looking forward to that and I think uh, uh, everybody's been asking do I need to bring something and to that I've been saying no but I kind of hope that was right we're going to have everything right
Yeah, all of yeah. That's all the other Everything stuff else is done. individual. Individually wrapped. Okay. You get some cookies and cakes and drinks and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, this coming Saturday, they had somebody make the beans and slaw and things like that, but everything else will be individually wrapped. So you don't need to bring anything. So Saturday, 6 p.m., bring you a lawn chair. Uh, we'll have some chairs if you don't have one, but uh, if you've got a lawn chair, bring that. And so it's going to be a good time of fellowship this coming Sunday at 6 p.m. Saturday. Uh, Saturday? Ain't that what I said? Sunday. Uh, so uh, just checking to see if you're all on your toes tonight. <laughs> just make sure you're listening. So Saturday, 6 p.m., okay? So uh, make sure if you have somebody to invite, invite them. Uh, we're just going to be hanging out, no pressure, and so uh, that's going to be good. We need kids for the church, so let's get every kid that we can that can possibly get here. And I don't know what all is going on Saturday night. might be some other things going on. I don't know, but what I do know is this. We've got a lot of kids. Let's act, see if we can't get them here. You know what I'm saying? And it, within the church. So if your grandkids, and, and I know there's other stuff going on, and I get that. But, uh, but let's. Lanson's having barbecue Saturday. Huh? The Lanson Fire Department. That's in the morning. Barbecue, yeah. That's in the morning. What's that got to do with now? I'm just inviting everybody to come. Oh, okay. To okay. Okay. I thought you said, well, I can't be here because they're no, having no, no, barbecue no. in the morning. I'm like, what's the morning got to do with the evening? Let me invite everybody to come. Yeah. Invite some Lansing folks to come. I will do that. Very good. So, Lansing Barbecue, Saturday morning. Starting at 10. Okay. you got to get there early if you want to get any chicken. That's right. So, that's going on. Um, hello? Oh, let's see. Next Sunday, uh, we'll be beginning our baby bottle campaign. And so, back in the vestibule, there are... Uh, Small baby bottles, if you'd like to take the small baby bottles home and um, fill it up with coins and bring it back, and, and then if others would like to bring it, uh, to take it home, but ultimately we're going to try to fill this one up. So this is just a little extra money for uh, the Ash County Pregnancy Care Center, and so uh, we'll do that. Any other announcements that I missed? I know... Not this Sunday, uh, but next Sunday is a churchwide picnic, so don't forget about that. We'll be up at Lansing Park. Uh, we, we have secured law enforcement for the day. Uh, Constable Johnny will be patrolling the area, so it's going to be safe. And uh, if she's got a cane, watch it. I think it's a rifle. Do what? Next Saturday is Jackson's graduation party. That's right. Next Saturday is Jackson's graduation party. And uh, uh, that is from 2 to 4. 2 to 4. So uh, I know that Bobby and uh, Edith Osborne have some that day. Don't y'all have some that day, Bobby? Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, right around the I thought maybe you wasn't supposed to know about it. <laughs> I thought, Lord, I just gave it away. Lee in or literally shoot me. But uh, you know about it, right? Okay, so that's going on. That's starting at 1 o'clock that day. And uh, so we're going to have a busy day that Saturday, Saturday after next. Uh, but uh, Big what? Shindig, huh? What time? What time? It starts at 1. Uh, uh, yeah, there's going to be something in the bulletin about this coming okay. Sunday. Because Leanne will want you to text or email mm -hmm. so she kind of have idea. But they're serving food and uh, and all that. So that's for their 25th wedding well, anniversary. Pies. Huh? We we'll have moon pies. We're going to have moon pies. Yeah. Good. I'm getting moon pies. And there's quite a few pastors around here to get moon pies from. So, uh, but, uh, but that's going on. And so there will be more information about that in the bulletin Sunday. And then, like she said, Jackson's, it's a drive through graduation party, so uh, let's make Jackson feel great. So I'm going to leave Bobby to go get a fire truck, drive through. And, uh, Anybody's if, got a motorcycle. And a mo I'm going to go home and get my motorcycle if I get my carburetor rebuilt. 
in time and ride through on my motorcycle too. So, uh, but that is from two to four. So uh, just take a minute, drive by, blow your horn, wave at Jackson. We always, because he'll be graduating this year, and so we want him to feel like a million bucks. All right, any other happenings? Just remember our family this week with Jerry's passing. It's in his funeral. Just okay, all right. So that'll lead us into our prayer concern. Uh, the family of Jerry Elliott. Remember them? I don't know if she's keeping it a secret or what, but Janet Johnson is down in Raleigh, and she's having cataract surgery done one of her eyes tomorrow. I don't know if it's secret or not. She hadn't said anything she to me about it. But I'll, anything, no. I'll call her tonight or in the morning or something. Well, tell Thank her you. I did it. Okay. Oh, I will. <laughs> Trust me, I will. Well, I talked to her yesterday. Okay, so remember her. Speaking of Raleigh, my granddaughter, who is now the mother of my five-month-old great-grandson, fell off of a horse, and she has a concussion and something is wrong with her back. Mm -hmm. So pray for her, please. Okay. And this is uh, Ada's. Ava. Ava's daughter. All right. Very good. Or Judy Richardson. Judy Richardson. Also, uh, keep in mind that uh, Miss Tootsie is staying with Judy uh, at her house right now. And so uh, they're probably watching. So, uh, uh, they say, hey, Tootsie. Hey, Mr. Tootsie. They can't see you, but uh, they can hear you. So uh, she's staying with Judy right now, so she's out of Margate. And uh, so let's pray for her as she recovers. Um, uh, the, the, the word I have is that Miss Tootsie has a cowbell. And when she needs, <laughs> she rings her cowbell, and uh, Miss Judy comes running. So that's a pretty good system. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you'd be wearing that cowboy. <laughs> and uh, so, keep remembering her. And she, every time I talk to her, she said, I just want to get back to church. And I know she does. Uh, so, uh, let's remember uh, who else? Andrew Jackson. Okay. Gilly. <coughs> Gilly. I was going to say, did he say Andrew Jackson? Yeah. He's been gone a while. <laughs> but Andrew Gilly, yes, thank you. I'm on the way. I'll be here after a while. <laughs> Donnie's on his way. Oh, oh have mercy. Um, Clint and Reba Gilly. Okay. W.M. Lewis, okay, has cancer. And uh, also, let's remember uh, Lester Parker. His brother passed away, I think, Friday before last. Uh, so I was able to get a hold of Lester and talk with him. And uh, Jane's not doing all that great. She's able to get around the house a little bit. That's about it. So uh, who else? Last day this uh, okay. cancer. He had some surgery. Okay, so let's remember Ralph. So it's uh, uh, he's it's been going on for about a week now, ain't it? Four or five days. Four or five days. Okay, all right. Let's remember Ralph. Yes. My daughter Sharon is in Florida. She's having a little problem with her her legs and <coughs> swollen and everything, and going to have to have some procedures done on that. So that's all right. So let's remember your daughter and also your granddaughter, Jessica. So let's keep her in your prayers. Anybody else? Not Riley Austin. He got out of the hospital today with his fluid build up. Okay. Let's remember Brother Riley, Bobby's our uncle. Son, and our son, Kenneth, he was in prison in Florida and got out and was just in a nursing home for about a month. He's doing pretty well. Okay. So, Jim and Barbara's son, Tim. I literally just had my bulletin in my hand. And I don't... Oh, there it is. 
Um, so let's uh, remember Tim. Anybody else? Well, we always have plenty on our prayer list and um, and unspoken as well. So, Miss Edith, can I call on you to lead us in prayer today, tonight? You good? Okay. <laughs> You might imagine there's going to be so, so many people there, and there's a lot of organizing going on, and uh, so let's pray for them. They're doing some things special for uh, all the canine officers that come in, in honor of uh, Deputy Logan Fox, who was a canine officer, and, and of course, uh, Sergeant Ward and his family. So, so if you'll... Turn your Bibles tonight to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And I know you are excited because uh, we're going we're gonna to take the next 37 weeks and study the baguettes in, uh, in here. That's going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> we won't unremember it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, but it is fun to get in there and study and try to follow along uh, that line sometimes. So as I mentioned, tomorrow is a National Day of Prayer. And uh, David's got a good program planned for 11 o'clock. Um, so hopefully we'll have quite a few folks. I'd like to see that we'd have just as many folks to go over there on Thursday Although, I'm going to be up front and say I can't go tomorrow. Uh, so I will not be able to be there. But I would like to see us to have as many folks at the prayer as we did at Winter Circle at the church Sunday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that would be a right smarter folks right there. <laughs> All right. Did you still have a message this morning from Linda? Sure. Oh, where's Linda? Oh, Linda, if you're home watching, I need you. <laughs> if she's not here, I know she's watching. So, Linda, don't let me forget to do that. I <laughs> uh, will try to do that. Sunday, in fact, for the Wednesday before, and uh, was the last time I was teaching. You know, again, I know David was here last Wednesday, and we were down at the campground and watching him and. And I'll be honest with you, I'm just going to, I'm going to I'm be a little dramatical here for just a minute. Uh, I had him propped up, I had my phone propped up there on the, on the steps of my camper, and I was working on the steps. And so I had him right there, and I could hear him fine. And uh, we were just sitting there appealing. And within a few minutes, when, uh, when he really got to talking, I stopped working on the steps, and I really paid attention. And if you guys were here that night... I mean, he really began to share his soul, and when you think about at his age, what he's gone through, and to hear those positive words come out was just, uh, it, 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 it gets you. And uh, so I was just sitting there thinking, man, I was just really proud to be his friend. And uh, he, uh, I talked to him today, and he got an opportunity to go horseback riding with a good friend Sunday, somebody that's helped him a lot during the time when 
Terry was sick, and uh, so, uh, but I just thought it's great, and I appreciate him sharing and being willing to take a chance and open up his heart. It's a great example for the rest of us. Sometimes it's easy not to do that, um, but uh, good example. But we've been talking about prayer and uh, the fact that we know that prayer is an essential part of the Christian's life. And, um, you know, kind of the catchphrase we've had was a prayerless life is a powerless life. So we left Sunday with this idea, these couple of ideas, and I'm not going to recap that, but I'm just going to remind you what they were. And we were talking about aligning our prayer request, our petition, aligning that up with God. In other words, our prayer request needs aligned up with what God wants for us in our life. And we read this scripture, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. And then we talked about this a little bit, attaching prayer to scripture, or attaching scripture to prayer. It can be vice versa, because... And the mindset behind that is because Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says that the Bible, the word of God is alive and it's sharp and it can get down in the, the, the marrow of the bone. I mean, it's sharp. It can cut down in there. And so the idea behind that is many times we don't know what to pray. And we have our own desires and some things we want to pray for and that's good. But there's times where we need to pray and we may not know what to pray. And I guarantee you if we get in Scripture, God's going to let us know what to pray. And then uh, we talked about agreeing with one another. And this is a difficult thing because a lot of people don't agree with one another. But there's things that we can agree on. And the example was there in 1 Peter 12, verse 5, where the church have, was gathered. And they had a primary purpose to be gathered and a primary prayer object. And what was that? That was Peter. They was praying for Peter's life to be saved. So I think when we agree and we know we can agree on something, that it gives us a confirmation and uh, confidence as well. So now uh, I mentioned it Sunday that I didn't have time to go into it and was going to do that tonight, and that is the prayer of Jabez. So this is one thing that I'd like to mention into the prayer of Jabez. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, I've already started studying for Sunday, and we're going to be looking at the prayer of Hannah. If you remember, Hannah is Samuel's mother, and Hannah was barren. She couldn't have kids, and that's what her prayer request was about. So we're going to be talking about that Sunday. So, but now uh, the Bible gives us some types or kinds of prayers that we have an example of, and and uh, I don't I don't know to say one of the most famous ones are, but certainly when I say the prayer of Jabez, just about everybody knows about the prayer of Jabez. So, First Chronicles chapter four, uh, verse ten, the Bible says this, and Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. So the prayer of Jabez, they've had t-shirts, they've had hats, they've had plaques and coffee cups and and artwork, and all kind of things. So the prayer of Jabez, uh, there's entire books written about the prayer of Jabez. Entire sermon series on the prayer of Jabez. So you could really break it down and, and get in there. But I just want to look at a couple things. And the first thing is this, where Jabez said, enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. And, and the direction where I'm coming from tonight is that, is to say that what Jabez was saying was this, enlarge my responsibility. Enlarge my responsibility. Enlarge my boundaries is what he's saying. And when we enlarge our boundaries, 
We are, in fact, enlarging our responsibilities, therefore enlarging our influence that we might have in that area. Some of you that own land will certainly understand this, maybe more than, uh, than some of us who really don't uh, own any land. Uh, from, from my perspective of home ownership, I'm not talking about my dad's, but my little place in Spruce Pine, I'm not even a good rock pro, pro, thrower. And I can stand on one side of my property and throw a rock almost to the end of the other side. Uh, well, I used to be able to anyway, with these old shoulders anyway. So you know, I don't have a whole lot of land uh, to deal with, but some of you with lots of land certainly understand this. The bigger the portion, the bigger the job. I mean, it's the more you got to take care of. The bigger the pasture, the more fence you have to mend. The more fence you have, the more opportunities uh, those intelligent animals uh, that wouldn't dare go mess up your fence, the more opportunity they have to do that. The bigger the garden, the more work. But the bigger the garden, the more the reward. The more I, the deer eat. The more the deer eat. <laughs> now, Betty, you going to take me and put me in mine, sitting on y'all's front porch and with Brother Phil, with a little 22 rifle leaned up against the column there, shooting at the deer across the road, and I thought, surely, surely, even season, was it? <laughs> surely, uh, you know, it, it would never happen where a car would pass by about the same time you fire. But there's a price to pay for protecting the garden, I guess. But it was a mighty big garden. Some of you have huge gardens. I've seen some, some of you gardens and you, boy, you really know how to grow uh, a garden, that's for sure. Uh, it always tickled me. Leave your place, Betty, and, and drive by the Barkers. And just a few years ago, old Dexter had cucumbers about that far from the edge of the road <laughs> on that other side there. You know, We ain't going to waste no space here. We're talking about big garden. Big garden, bigger reward. Jabez asked God to bless him, to help him in his work, to be with him in all that he did, and to keep him from evil. So if you look there at verse 10, and there's a lot of other interesting things I want to add in there in just a second. But if you're looking at verse 10, that's exactly what he just did. And he acknowledged God as the center of his life. Jabez sets an example of a relationship that I believe that you and I can use as an inspiration to strengthen our own relationship with God. And there's not a person in here tonight, not, not a one of us, that does not need to strengthen our relationship with God. The stronger our relationship, the more we're able to hear him and the more obedient we'll be. So we all need to strengthen that relationship. And Jabez is somebody that we can certainly use as an example. When Jabez asked uh, for God to enlarge my border, he wasn't only referring to the physical sense, while well, certainly he was talking about that, but when you're the type of man during this time in biblical days, when you enlarge your coast, not only do you enlarge your physical coast, but you enlarge your spiritual coast. Because the more you have to look after, the more responsibilities that you have. Let's keep in mind tonight that, uh, you know, back in this time, uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but back in this time, being a God follower, as Jabez was, meant everything. Everything came second to that. Everything. We'll look at that a little bit more. When... Uh, When one's relationship with God was directly related to their everyday life, for an example, if it was to be the same today, if you were a banker, you'd be a Christian banker. The Christian part would be more important to you than the banker part. If you was a farmer, you'd be a Christian farmer. See, their whole lives, if I could draw a big old circle, God was right smack dab in the middle. God was everything 
every hour of every day. They prayed numerous things times throughout the day. Now I understand they were under the law and there were things that they were required to do. But some of us, we get so busy and we don't even think about God all day. It's human nature. And so I think the point there is we probably need to make God more important. If you are a truck driver, then you would have been a Christian truck driver. You would have been a devout follower of God. Because what you did did not stop you from being a God follower. It was important. It was in every aspect. I don't know that we're better off. We are in the aspect that we're under grace. I don't want to be under law. I want to be under grace. But I don't know if we're any better. Uh, I think if we go back maybe 100, 150 years or some of the, maybe the early years when y'all grew up, church, God, was just part of your whole day. The whole day. Maybe some of you can remember that as a young child. And, uh, you know, we've gotten farther and farther and farther away from that, haven't we? So what do we expect? What do we expect our country to be when even we, folks in the church, the pastor, the deacons, the teachers, all of us have gotten farther away from God than getting closer to God. So this is a reminder for all of us that God should be more important in our life than anything else. And uh, that goes for all of us. So that was the difference between uh, then. Jabez's prayer is such an example for us, and I believe that we can use this prayer in our daily lives. And some people might be quick to say, well, why in the world would I want to do that? I don't want a bigger coast. I want a smaller coast. I'd like for you to give this half to that neighbor and this half to that neighbor, and I just need this little strip right here to take care of, and that's all I need. But that's not what God wants us to do either. When we pray, we begin acknowledging who God is, and we have a heart that we want to do exactly what God wants us to do. Now, Edith means a lot to me. And her opinion of me means a lot to me. And if she ever come to me and said, Wade, I think you need to be doing more of this, I would certainly listen to her. Wouldn't you? I've learned and got to, really. <laughs> but her opinion, uh, my opinion of her means so much that I would really listen. But at the end of the day, it really shouldn't matter what Edith wants me to do. Because it matters what God wants me to do. But this I guarantee you. A good God-fearing person, a good uh, praying to God person is going to be right in line with what God wants. And that's some of that prayer of agreement that we've talked about. So we can ask God to guide us as we broaden our territory for his kingdom. In other words, what we're saying is enlarge my responsibility. Now let me ask you, is that is that easy? Is that an easy thing to do? To say, God, enlarge my coast. You and I don't understand that. You know, some of you do. Some of you have lots of land. Some of you have a little bit of land. Some of you don't have much land, like me. But you do have the concept. We do all understand the concept. And when we enlarge our coast, we are, in essence, enlarging our responsibility. And when God adds to your coast and he gives you a, no, a, no, a, a whole other 100 acres, what are you going to do with that 100 acres? What does it mean? What does it mean now that God has given you that? If God was a blessing, that's another 100 acres to plow or take care of or whatever the responsibility grows. So that's what I'm talking about. Jabez prayed, enlarge my responsibility. Now there's a second thing that this prayer does. If we was to use this as an example, not only enlarge my responsibility, but we can pray this, God, I'm going to need you to enhance my role. And then God's going to say to you, is because I've enlarged your coast, because I've uh, enlarged your responsibility, now I'm going to have to enhance 
your role just a little bit. Because now there's more to do. And now it's going to take you longer. It's going to cost you more. And all those uh, ideas behind that. Time certainly would not permit me to, to go into to this too deep. But just think about that for a minute. If we're asking God to enlarge our responsibility as the prayer of Jabez recommends that we do, there's a spiritual truth to that that you and I can take because here's the deal. Just because we ask God to enlarge it doesn't mean he's going to give us the whole back 40. It doesn't mean that, that he's like, oh boy, I, I might get my neighbor's land. <laughs> No, it's the responsibility that we're talking about. So I don't know if there's a whole lot of excitement for this because it's going to bring in more work. But there's a spiritual idea with this that as a mature Christian, and the assumption is that most of us here on a Wednesday night are mature Christians. Those that are listening to me tonight are mature Christians. You should not be afraid of, nor should I, be afraid when God wants to enlarge our coast, our borders, our responsibilities. We should be ready and we should be honored that God would count us worthy of that. But then uh, we must enhance our role. Some key phrases I think about when, uh, when we get to that point. Uh, when we begin to enhance our role to make us a better person, uh, some phrases I've heard in the past, step up to the plate. If your responsibility is more, your job is more, you've got a lot more to do, it's time to step up on the, to the plate. Uh, this is where the rubber meets the road. I've also heard it's where the bullet hits the bone, but I don't know if that's uh, that could have been a song from the 70s. I'm not sure. If we are serious about asking God to enlarge our territory, then our roles within that territory may need to be enhanced. Because, see, the territory that God gives you now may not be the exact kind of field that you're used to. I mean, just in the farm, I'm no farmer. Uh, most people know here now I'm definitely not a builder. I can't build much. Uh, I'm not allowed around power tools very often with the brotherhood, but I'm a good water boy. <laughs> That's right. And I'm not a big farmer, but I do know this because I've worked on both kind of farms. There's a big difference between a dairy farm and a beef farm. Now, a lazy man like me, I'd prefer to be on a beef farm because I know a dairy farm is a lot of work, a lot of work. So what if you was like, oh, God, enlarge my territory. And he said, okay, I'm going to give you a dairy farm. Now, wait a minute. That ain't what I said. <laughs> so our roles may need to be enhanced when God does enlarge some of those things. The word enhance means to intensify, to increase, to further improve the quality or the value or the extent of. If we ask God to enlarge and to enhance, then there's a third thing that we must be ready for. And we must be ready. We must ask and be ready when God gives us the answer to help us and to equip us for our response. So if you're taking notes, we're talking about enlarging our responsibility, enhancing our role, and now we're talking about equipping our response. Will our response be yes or no? I know your minds are churning. Some of you. Some of you that are churning mighty slow. Right now, I can tell. And it's at the end of the day. That's okay, right? That's all right. So, it's, does sometimes God give us a question where our answer is just yes? Sure he does. Perhaps sometimes the answer is just no. It's that simple. But I found in my life that very few times, and oh how 
my door those times when it's a simple yes or no. I have found out in my life that sometimes the answer is not yes or no, but there's more that has to be unpacked. It'll be yes if this, this, and this happens, and it may be no if this happens. So sometimes it takes time and you have to unpack what God gives you. I do love the times when, when the answer is so simple and so quick. Bam, we know what the answer is and you go. But sometimes you got to unpack it. Sometimes time and timing comes into play. But regardless, like King David, our help must come from the Lord. And he will, in the right time, give you the answer. So we know that we must align our request with God to attach our request with Scripture, in other words, God's Word, to be in agreement with our kinfolk, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Then the last thing that we talked about Sunday was asking in faith. So I want you to keep your finger there. In fact, I want you to keep your eyes there and... Uh, in the fourth chapter of 1 Chronicles. Because if you go back to verse 1, you're going to see a long line of names. And that's about all you're going to see. So-and-so begat so-and-so, and so-and-so -and -so from this city begat somebody from that city. And if you want to pronounce them, you just be my guest. Go right ahead. But here's what I know, though. That so-and-so begat so-and-so, and it's all the same till you get down to verse 10. And there's a difference in verse 10. Jabez stands out. Why? Because he asked in faith. Now, if you want to, you can go back to chapter 1 of 1 Chronicles. And you're going to find the beginnings of the begats from Adam. You're going to go back to the first man. And you're going to see Adam. And you're going to see all the begats and the begats. But if you go back to the lineage that we find here of Jabez, Jabez is in the lineage of Seth. And I asked T.C. earlier, does she remember Seth? And she's like, yeah, I think I do. I think I do. And it's like, because we ain't thought about something in a long time. So, I'm sure there's people here now saying, Seth, I remember Seth. <laughs> well, he, Seth is not Cain and Abel, but he's their, their brother. So if you look in the line in the lineage of, of, of Adam, you know what happened with Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we remember what happened to Cain and Abel. But Adam and Eve did have other children. And one of them was Seth. And Jabez is in the line of Seth. Why is that important? Because in all of this begetting, and uh, there was a whole lot of begetting, and we get down to verse 10. And the way it reads, and Jabez called, let's go back to verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez because I bear him in sorrow. Now stop and think about that for a minute. Like I told you, there's so much I'd like to jump into. The time won't permit because there's a main idea here. But just think about all the ramifications that's found in that. Jabez is more honorable, but his mama named him Jabez because, why well, did it say here? Apparently he caused her a lot of pain. I bear him with much sorrow. What if we were, what if were some of you mothers would have named your kids according to their baby personalities or how long they took to be born? Think about what some of the names of our kids, now if you'll stop, think about that for a little bit, that can get pretty funny, so we better not go down in there. <laughs> But verse 10, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. See, if that was the case, our son wouldn't be named Chad. Whatever the word, well, his middle name would be Stubborn. 
and his first name would be Aggravating. So Aggravating Stubborn Hunt Singer. But verse 10, And Jabez called on that God of Israel. You say, Preacher, are you ever going to get through this verse? I know some of you are sitting here right now. Well, mine would be lovely, so easy. That would be his name. I know it. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. I think that's amazing because everything's different until it comes down to verse 10. In other words, this. God has his plans. God has his timing. And what we've got to do is we've got to be in prayer. And the prayer of Jabez, which is one of many prayers we could have used, but the prayer of Jabez tells us that we have a duty. That if we're going to live right, if we're going to advance the kingdom like we're supposed to, then we're going to be saying, okay, Lord, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. I don't want any more. I don't need any more. I can do all what I need to do and still have plenty of time to go fishing. Notice I'm looking to this side of the sanctuary <laughs> and not to that side. I was just using it as an example. Got plenty of time to get all my work done and still go fishing. Still do this or do that, fill in the blank. But it might be that God says, I have something else that I want you to do. In fact, I have something else I need you to do. Are we at a place in our life where we could say, all right, Lord, can you take the example of Jabez and say, Lord, if you would enlarge my coast, enlarge my responsibility. That's a tough thing, but I do hope that we can pray and the Lord will help us with that. What do you think? Well, I read one of the little books that was written about the, the prayer. Mm -hmm. And they had a kind of a different take on this verse. Uh, their, the main thing was that he prayed for a blessing and God granted it. And they they didn't talk about much about the territory and all that, but uh, it was you know just one of those little I guess instructional biblical mm -hmm. books. And if if we what it was saying was if we want a blessing, we must pray for it, and God will grant it if we believe. Okay. Any other thoughts? Anybody here blessed? Amen. Amen. There we are. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we've had tonight. We thank you, God, that you granted this, this blessing of us being here together tonight and being able to get into your word. And Lord, now we just ask that you'll go with us from here, provide safety for us, Lord, all the things that the church is planning. God, I pray that you would bless that, Lord, and that we would receive the right kind of fellowship that we're wanting to get from it. And Lord, we'll be able to reach some of the people that perhaps uh, maybe not ready or will not come into a Sunday service. We can get them here, Lord, by some other ways. But let us be quick to love on them. But Lord, let us be quick to share the good news of the gospel with them, for it's the gospel that makes all the difference in the world. So it is the gospel, God, that guides us. It's the gospel, Lord, that leads us into this time. Lord, we love you again. We lift up all these requests to you, and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Jim, you need to meet with the brotherhood tonight? You need to... Just a couple minutes. A couple minutes.